Hey y'all, how are all my beautiful friends doing? I hope y'all all have had a great week and welcome back to Crime Time with Mel. If you are new, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Over here we do missing and unsolved cases. Mainly, sometimes I will throw in some solved cases from here and there. And if you're a returning viewer or subscriber, I love y'all and thank you so much for all your support and kind words. I appreciate it more than you know. So today's video is going to be about Brittany Drexel. Y'all, I have had this video planned for quite some time. She was a missing teenager that went missing in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and wow, some huge updates have happened, so I knew I had to get this video out sooner rather than later, so here we are. On April 25th, 2019, 17-year-old high school player Brittany Drexel went on a spring break trip and walked out of a Myrtle Beach hotel. She was never seen again. Do y'all remember this case? This case has stuck with me. She was freaking beautiful. And Myrtle Beach, I have been to several times. It is not far away from Georgia. And we either went there or we went to Destin. We mainly went to Destin, but I have been to Myrtle Beach a few times and it's just crazy to me. Drexel was full of life. She was a very fun-loving kid who loved to be the center of attention and had a ton of energy. Can these kids please give me some of that energy? <laughs> she was born in Rochester, New York on October 7th, 1991 to her mom, Dawn, and her father, John. Now, Dawn and John, when they conceived Brittany, they were kids themselves. They were teenagers, and the two high school sweethearts just ended up separating when Brittany was just a toddler. Dawn stayed in New York and her dad, John, ended up moving to Tampa, Florida. And unfortunately, Brittany and her dad did not see a lot of each other. Dawn ended up getting remarried and to, I, I believe the person that she remarried was more like a father figure to Brittany. But when Brittany was 16 years old, John and Brittany ended up reuniting. John had a lot of time to make up for over 10 years worth of time. John would fly up to New York. They would spend a ton of time together. They, he would take Brittany shopping, take her to the movies, just really anything to get to know Brittany and spend time with her. But like I said, not long after Don and John separated, Don remarried to Chad Drexel, who at the time adopted Brittany. And like I said, this was Brittany's basically father figure growing up. Chad was in the military, and after his military services ended, they ended up settling down in a suburb of Rochester called Chile. Brittany, at a very early age, ended up developing a love for soccer, and despite Brittany's small statue, she was super quick with the ball from what her friends and family says. Y'all, don't underestimate us small people. We are quick. Brittany also aspired to have a career in nursing, cosmetology, modeling. She just loved all of those. And Brittany was born with, I'm not going to say the technical term because I'm not that smart, but <laughs> she was born with, I believe, like a lazy eye or a wandering eye is what they call it. And she had to have multiple surgeries to keep the eye from wandering. And I believe it ended up rendering the eye blind. Don't quote me on what it's called. If y'all know exactly what it's called, I had it written down. Persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. Like I said, I am, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. But to kind of make that eye from stop wondering, Brittany got contacts, contact lenses, which gave her a very distinctive appearance. And from the pictures I see, I don't even notice that she has this eye condition. And she, regardless, this girl is freaking beautiful. Aunt and Chad ended up separating in 2008. And this was not easy for Brittany. Brittany ended up getting very behind in school. She started failing out in a lot of classes and it exaggerated her depression. She ended up living and staying with her mom, but she did see Chad still from time to time. In April of 2009, Brittany ended up asking her mom if she can go on spring break to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina with some girlfriends. Brittany's mom said no. You know, she wasn't doing good in school and she did not know the group of girls that she was going with. There was gonna be no adult supervision. So 
she said no and I don't blame her if my 13 year old well if my 13 year old was 17 and she asked to go thousands of miles away to spring break with no adult supervision the answer is no girl I'm sorry it's no and what's weird is Dawn actually had a premonition that something would happen that would be bad if Brittany went. So she just had that mother's instinct that I talk about all the time that is a real thing. So because of this, this led to several arguments between her mom and Brittany and for days, several days, they just argued. Well, Brittany ended up asking if she can go to her friend's house for spring break and as kind of a compromise, Dawn allowed it. She was like, okay, you're not going to South Carolina, but I will let you go spend some time with your friend and you, your spring break won't be ruined, as the teenager says. You know, you're ruining their life if you say no to anything fun that they want to do. But that day on April 22nd, instead of Brittany just going to chill at her friend's house, they all left and traveled to South Carolina without telling her mom. So Brittany is there in South Carolina for about three days. They're just hanging out, going to bars, going to the beach. Three days later, after her and her friends arrived at Myrtle Beach, they were at the Bar Harbor Hotel and Brittany ended up calling Dawn. She said that she was going to go hang out at the beach and she would call her mom back later. Well, well Dawn, when she heard about the beach that Brittany was there, she honestly just thought that Brittany was at the beach in New York. There was a lo local beach that wasn't too far from their house, and it was in the 80s that day, so she really thought nothing of it. I mean, she trusted Brittany. She thought that Brittany had never lied to her before, and surely she's not going to drive all that way to South Carolina and not even tell her mom. Teens are sneaky, and I know a lot of y'all have them. Y'all can vouch for me that they are some sneaky people. And that day was the last time Dawn would ever speak to her daughter. That night around 8 p.m., Brittany had left her friends at the Bar Harbor Hotel beachfront to walk about a mile and a half away. She walked to South Ocean Boulevard, which is south from that hotel that she was staying at, to visit one of her longtime friends named Peter, who she said that she left flip-flops in his car and she wanted to retrieve those flip-flops. Now, Peter was staying at the Blue Water Resort. Security cameras at the resort did show Brittany arriving into the resort. She had a beige purse, flip-flops, she had shorts on, and everything seemed normal. Then the cameras captured her leaving around 8.45 p.m. She walked down the street while Brittany was texting her boyfriend. Now, Brittany's boyfriend was, I believe, originally supposed to go on this trip, but he ended up, he ended up staying back in New York just because he had some work obligations that he had to take care of. Now, they had been texting back and forth for a while, and around 9.15, Brittany just didn't respond. John kept telling Brittany to answer the phone, please answer the phone, or I'm going to call your mom, I'm going to call your friends, please just answer. Brittany was not answering so John ended up contacting her friends and saying where's Brittany they didn't know and they haven't seen Brittany so John ends up calling Dawn he tells her that no one can find Brittany and her heart sank now this is the first time that she finds out that Brittany is not in New York Brittany is in South Carolina and as a mom I cannot imagine that feeling. First off, I had a premonition, a mother's instinct that if she went there, something would happen and now she can't find her daughter. At first, of course, she's mad because Brittany said that she wouldn't go and Brittany left and lied to her. So of course she's upset, but mainly she just really wants to know where Brittany is. Her mom's just thinking this whole time she's at a friend's house in New York. Really, she's in Myrtle Beach. And she literally might have made a decision that cost her life. This is why I say, no matter the circumstances, I am not my child's friend. I am their parent above all. I can be their friend later on in life. But when I say something, I'm not just saying it. I've more than likely been there, done that, don't want to do it again. And I'm trying to protect my child from making the same mistakes that I made. Dawn ends up calling John her dad and both Dawn and John start immediately packing up and they fly to South Carolina. Now, if you haven't seen Myrtle Beach or Panama City in Florida for that matter around spring break, there are a 
ton of teens just partying on the beach, drinking, living their life. There's nothing wrong with it, but it is packed, slam full with teens. I refuse to go to Panama City or South Carolina for spring break. I'm too old for that. I don't want to deal with a bunch of rowdy teenagers drinking and getting drunk. And especially if I got two kids, I just, I don't know. I don't want to deal with it, but they are having the time of their life. And that's exactly what Myrtle Beach looked like. When Don and John got there, they saw all these kids tried to find Brittany and they could not find her. Dawn and her friends were frantically searching for Brittany everywhere. They were looking in dumpsters, behind buildings, in hotels, on the beach, literally everywhere. At one point, Dawn was like, is she in the water? Like, where is she? And this is when Dawn learns that they've been there for two days, just hanging out before Brittany disappeared. They hung out on the beach during the day, and then at night, they would go to the bars and party. Again, nothing unusual. Police first interviewed her friend Peter, since, of course, he was the last person to really see Brittany. And then, once Peter checked out, they interviewed her three girlfriends that she traveled with. Cell phone records show that Brittany's phone pinged seven miles south of Myrtle Beach, just half an hour after her disappearance. And at 11.58, two and a half hours after that original ping, it pings again, 50 miles south of Myrtle Beach in a town called McKellensville. Then her phone goes dead. Police searched Brittany's hotel room. They found her clothes that she packed, but they did not find Brittany's phone or her purse. Also near the area that Brittany's phone last pinged, there was a body that washed up that they thought could possibly be Brittany, but it was not Brittany. But they did search in that area for 11 days. In 2011, police searched an apartment near Georgetown County, which is near McKellensville, but they didn't end up finding anything there either. And John had several TV appearances. They were even on the Dr. Phil show and everybody was talking about Brittany. And Dawn eventually moved to Myrtle Beach to be closer to where Brittany was last seen to help keep an eye out on the investigation and just search for her daughter. In a 2014 newspaper article, Dawn expressed a theory that Brittany defied going to Myrtle Beach and she was offered a modeling job. Dawn believed that her daughter was being trafficked, but Myrtle Beach police did not think that this was the case. They claim that little to no trafficking incidences ever happened in their jurisdiction. But a 2019 report conducted by the South Carolina Human Trafficking Task Force rated this county as the number one county in South Carolina for reported human trafficking. In June of 2016, the FBI held a news conference. During that, they stated that they believe that Brittany was murdered shortly after her disappearance. She was abducted and taken to a town nearby Georgetown. Now remember, this is right near Brittany's last phone ping was. That is where they believe that she was. The Bureau ended up putting up a $25,000 reward for any information leading to the resolution of this case. Two months later, the Charleston Post and Courier reported new developments from a bond hearing for Timothy Taylor. Now, Timothy was an inmate serving time in prison for an unrelated charge. FBI agent ended up testifying that earlier that year, Taquan Brown, which is another South Carolina inmate in the prison, who began serving a 25-year sentence, her manslaughter ended up saying that in 2009, shortly after Brittany's disappearance, he ended up going to visit a stash house. He says that he ended up giving money to Sean Taylor, which is Timothy's father. He says that when he was walking through this house, he saw Timothy essaying Brittany with other people around. He continued through the house into the backyard where Timothy's dad, Sean, was and made his payment. He says as they were talking, Brittany ran from the house and started running down the street, but she did end up getting recaptured and Timothy took out a pistol and pistol whipped her and then brought her back inside the house. He said he then heard two shots and that is when he thought that Brittany had been killed. He claims that he saw Brittany's body wrapped up, being removed from the house, and then they placed it in a local 
alligator pond where many alligators are. And these statements from Brown that were made to the investigators were ended up corroborated by information received from another informant who was not identified but was but described as being incarcerated at the Georgetown County Jail at the time he talked to authorities. And according to the second inmate, Timothy picked up Brittany from Myrtle Beach and took her to McKellensville, where Timothy lives. He showed her off to friends and allegedly tried to sell her for trafficking purposes. And Brown said that when this case ended up drawing heavy media attention, that is when Timothy decided to Brittany, but he could avoid being arrested. Now this bond hearing was being held after Timothy's arrest on a federal indictment charge for a bunch of different violence crimes and also a charge that stemmed from a 2011 McDonald's robbery. He had already been convicted of his involvement in the crime for state court which he had finished by the time that these federal charges started happening. And Timothy's mother said that these new charges were complete craziness because she did not believe her son and her husband were involved. Timothy went through the ringer as being accused of committing this heinous crime against Brittany. He was on the Dr. Phil show. He constantly said that he was innocent. He had never seen Brittany never heard of Brittany until he started seeing flyers and media posts about her missing. I may as well start with the obvious question. Did you kill Brittany Drexel? No, sir. I did not kill Brittany Drexel. Were you involved in the kidnapping of Brittany Drexel? No, sir, I was not. Were you with Brittany Drexel the night she was, she disappeared in April of 2009? No, sir. I was not with her. Had, had you ever met her? Or what do you What did you know about her? Um, I never met her personally or physically. The only thing I've known is from what I've been seeing on TV and the bulletins, and what the FBI has been told, telling me so far. In March of 2018, a news report station in Florence reported that nine months earlier, as part of a plea bargain, that Timothy was to take a lie detector test, which he allegedly failed. And according, and according to government sentencing, the only possible knowledge of the case to which Taylor admitted involved having overheard part of an argument between two people over Brittany's phone. He said it made him suspicious, but when he was connected to the lie detector test and asked whether he saw Brittany after her disappearance or, or if he knew who was involved. The examiner determined that he was not being truthful. And under this plea agreement, he would face at least 10 years for the involvement in the robbery of McDonald's. After reviewing the results with his lawyer, the examiner attempted to continue, but Timothy was too angry to do so. Therefore, the government recommended the max sentence. Before the sentence hearing, Taylor was found to have violated the terms of his bail and was held in Charleston County Jail. The judge ordered his bail to be reinstated and that he to be remained in house arrest until the Supreme Court decided what to do about the case. Six months later, the judge sentenced Taylor to time served 319 days after a guilty plea was forced by a similar disposition in the state court. And in 2019, Brown, this inmate, ended up giving a statement over the telephone to a Rochester station when he was incarcerated. He says that he actually saw Brittany four times after her disappearance, in addition to the first time after seeing her. He says that he saw her a month later, and then that is when she was killed. And according to him, he saw Brittany being essayed by a group of 8 to 12 young guys at this McKellenville stash house on April 27th, two days after Brittany disappeared. He said at the time he did not recognize her, but as publicity took off about the case about a month later, he realized that that was Brittany. And his second encounter with Brittany was just a few days later. And this was the event that he heard the gun at this stash house. He saw her body being carried out in a rug or a blanket or whatever. And his third encounter was five days later. He saw Brittany on a lightly traveled dirt road by his cousin's house in Jacksonboro, which is about 80 miles away from McKellensville. 
The last time he saw Brittany, he claims, was at his cousin's house when he was visiting a friend. This was around late May. But he saw her in a wooded area in the back of the property and witnessed Brittany being killed by a man that all he knew of was Nate. He said he shot her twice with a double-barreled shotgun. But him and his friend left immediately because they were scared that they would be considered as being an accomplice. Now his description of the stash house did match and... His second visit did, in fact, line up with the story that was told to the FBI. And the cousin that owned the property that Brittany was at is now deceased. Now, he did file a lawsuit against the prosecutors and other federal officials. He said he identified them publicly and played a role in doing so. He alleges that by doing that gave him a re reputation as being a snitch and put his life in danger, which... Most of us know snitches get stitches. Also says that Timothy Taylor offered people $15,000 to anyone that kills him. And he has since then been assaulted. So lots of stories and theories and allegations are made about Timothy Taylor is being guilty. I mean, he got drugged through the mud. Now, as of current day, the beginning of May, Georgetown County deputies arrested a man by the name of Raymond Moody. He is a registered SO, and they've considered him to be a person of interest for over a decade. A week after they recovered human remains buried in the woods off of a private gated road just outside of Georgetown. Charges against Mr. Raymond Moody are murder, kidnapping, criminal sexual conduct in the first degree, all of which occurred on April the 25th of 2009, and all of which detail Brittany Drexel as the victim. Charges against Raymond Moody were made possible through investigative findings and evidence that led us to a possible site where Raymond Moody buried a deceased Brittany Drexel, honor of her found April the 26th of 2009. Cuban remains were discovered at that location on May the 11th of 2022. The remains were recovered by the FBI's evidence response team and transferred to Georgetown County Coroner Chase Ridgway. Coroner Ridgway, along with the Charleston County Coroner's Office, positively identified through dental records the remains we found were indeed Brittany Drexel. Now the arrest warrant alleged that Brittany was strangled, arred, and buried the following day. On May 7th, 2022, Raymond confessed. And that is how they found Brittany's remains. Wow. And Timothy Taylor has said this whole time that he was innocent after people had said they saw him do this, they saw this, they saw that. It just goes to show you what people would say about you. I mean, his name literally got dragged through the mud. So many people were accusing him of lying. He was harassed. His family was harassed. And no, this isn't about him. It's about Brittany and the fact that she was and finally her remains were found and finally there is somebody held responsible for this heinous crime but also there was an innocent man that literally got dragged through the mud for this that had nothing to do with it so i'm happy his name was cleared and i'm happy that britney's family has some sort of closure they found their daughter they found the perpetrator that took their daughter away way too soon and now her family finally has answers. But wow, when I saw that they found her body and they arrested somebody that was not Timothy, I was shook. I mean, I didn't know what to believe and my heart goes out for Brittany. So please, to all you young people watching this video, please listen to your mom. Please do not just walk around somewhere by yourself. Even Myrtle Beach, it's a pretty safe area. I've walked the streets of Myrtle Beach before, but at night, it is a whole other ball game anywhere you go. You just never know what people are capable of. And this man, Raymond Moody, has 
aired people before in the past. He was an SO in the past and in my opinion, that doesn't change. And if he was still locked up in prison for that crime, Brittany would still be alive to this day. So y'all let me know if you have heard about this, if you have heard about the new details about this case, what your opinions are. Again, please be respectful down in the comments below or I'll just delete it. I don't like hate, I don't like drama. And if you bring that to my channel, I will just simply remove the comment. So fair warning. But thank you all so very much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video. And I hope you'll have a great weekend. Summer has officially started here in Georgia. Yay, I'm so excited, but I love y'all. Y'all are the best and I will see you in my next video. Bye y'all.